Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the Outer Wilds. So this might be one of my favorite games of all time. That should be enough for you to, you know, perk up and pay attention, or maybe even go and get it yourself. Uh, surprisingly, they just announced that there's a DLC coming out for this uh, tail end of September. And now being the tail end of July, that gives us, what, what's that, two months, basically, before that's out? Perfect time to revisit this, perhaps even get through it in its entirety and complete it. Um, this is an absolutely beautiful, handcrafted and curated miniature solar system exploration sort of game. I don't want to give too much away. I haven't actually finished it because I play a million different games, but I played enough of it to know that it is phenomenal. It's about a journey anyway. Uh, it does have a sort of Groundhog Day sort of loop mechanic. Um, I don't think that's spoilery to say it so long after its release, and especially when this becomes apparent in the first you know, 30 to 60 minutes of gameplay um, pretty early on, basically. Apparently, they want you to play it with a gamepad, so we'll do that. New expedition. We're just going to get straight in there and, and give it a go. And, and uh, my hope is I can share something really wonderful with you guys. That ship's exploding, and there's a little life pod going away from it. And we've woken up asleep at the fire. Roast marshmallow. Don't mind if I do. Extend stick. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, buddy. There's our pilot back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars. I see. So it's launch day. Seems like seems like only yesterday that you joined the space program, and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all filled up and ready to go. Yeah, all systems go. I'm ready. Let's go. Glad you're excited. But remember, if you wreck the ship, I'm not building you a new one. I'm not made of lightweight re-entry grade aluminium alloys, you know. Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the uh, observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes. So... We're going to want to come over here to this, like, launch thing. This 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 planet that we start on with these weird little blue dudes. It's very wood punk. So we're going to go exploring in our rickety wooden spaceship. But let's go get that, uh... Let's go get those launch codes before we do anything else. Hello, sir. Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space? Aren't you? Aren't you? You better not change your mind. Yeah, I'm still going. You better be. It's been forever since anyone launched into space, and I really, really want to see it. Really badly. Hey, you want to try out my new model ship? Slate says it's just like the real thing, only less likely to start a fire. Yeah, so you can sort of do a practice here, right? Which is handy. So we've got up and down. And then, yeah, it's, uh, it works, it works, it works. All right, good work, thank you. How lovely is this music? The soundtrack absolutely kills it in this game. All right. And we've got all sorts of cool dudes standing around. Hey, Hatchling, I hear you're uh, leading us to seek adventure among the stars. When you return, Let's you, me, and Gossen open up a bottle of the good stuff. Okay. I'm only seeking adventure among one star. Okay, yeah. Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels and good luck. So, you can potter around this village and chat to people, and uh, there's, there's a lot of tutorials about how to use, uh, like, sound detection devices, that sort of stuff. It's actually pretty good as far as like a sort of tutorial opening goes. How lovely is all this flowing water and... Oh, that's nice. This dude's fishing. We might just... Zip up to the, uh... Might zip straight up to the observatory, eh? Get this ball rolling. Oh, that's right. There's a... Uh, it's this sort of rift. Ghost matter, right? You can detect it with cameras. 
See that blackout? See the small planetary bodies keep going past? That's why we keep getting those shadows strip over. Yeah, so if you take a... You can actually see the ghost matter. And that stuff will instant kill you. Um... A small smoke coming from Young Bart Crater up north. Figured I should go check it out. Tick tight. Oh, right, no. So this is, uh... You can launch a probe here. I believe. Alright. And then you can take photos as you go. Which is cool, because your ship comes equipped with that sort of, uh... Thing. So, yeah, like I said, this, is, this whole sort of section of this planet is set up as a tutorial, as it were. The Zero-G cave, where you can, you know, learn about Zero-G. Oh, there's the observatory there. God, it's so good to be playing this game again. So these seem to be like a precursor species. Markably intact statue is carved by the Nomai, uh, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appeared to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where this species came from or what happened to them. Hmm, pretty cool. So this is cool. This is like uh, going to Science Works. There's a photo of that. I think we saw that explode at the beginning, right? These balls move on their own. It's probably the, the moon orbits our planet. So, so we have a hyper-exaggerated moon-gravity relationship, so that's why they're rolling. That's pretty cool. These are all the planets in the solar system, I believe, that we have. If I recall... So it's showing you all the cool anomalies as well. There's this rock here that, if you don't observe it, it moves. So if you look away and then look back, it's gone to there. But if we were to look away, it'll go back. Pretty cool, huh? I remember all this stuff like it was yesterday. Right, so here's like the ang alien language. Know my writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although the text is linear, know my text often branches from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written on a di by a different author, right? So we've got this sort of like translator device. We're nearly ready. Uh, Felix and I have finished construction and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Fortunately, the At Atoll Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Cool, huh? Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorative pottery uh, was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system? Or were they brought among, born among the stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further xenoarchaeological Zeno expeditions. And we've got some Nomai bones. Got a little landing craft there. Oh, this is like a gravity rock. So if we go here... We can walk up and down. So you see, it's setting us up with a whole bunch of tools, and this thing is nightmare fuel. Anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear on one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places. 
with minimal atmosphere. Oh, I'm sure that's not bloody foreshadowing anything horrible. Alright, let's go up. Oh, wow. Look at that. The interloper. It's like an ice comet. Nice. Nice. Hello. There you are. I'm just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. So I'm not the first. There's a, there's a whole troop of them out there. I think there's one on each planet, actually. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with the Know My Translator tool. I confess I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. So I like that, that while we're not the, the first person pathfinding out there, there's still some basic exploration done. We are the first person with the ability to translate language. It's a very clever setup that without putting us on the tip of the spear, there can still be some world building ahead of us, but we're going to learn a lot that no one else did. Mm. Excuse me, just having a quick sip. Tell me, uh, what's your plan once you're going into space? No, I don't know. I'm going to learn more about the Nomai, I guess. I might have guessed as much. No sense in making a translator tool if you're not going to use it to translate anything. We barely scratched the surface of the Nomai writing in our solar system, so we still know very little about them. We've, not, uh, we've no idea if they originated here or travelled here uh, or why they disappeared. Uh, that tool of yours should prove indispensable in solving the mystery of this ancient species. Well then, looks like that's uh, all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. Yes, I'm ready to get off this rock. Excellent, you'll be needing the launch codes then. Here they are. Best get off the ground before Slate makes any modifications to your ship, eh? Good luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything else. Right, so we've got the launch codes down the bottom corner there. And then off we go. And uh, now the creepy statue's looking at me. <laughs> it's so clever how it does that. It's It must have been recording my gameplay internally. And it played it back to me. Okay. Buddy. Can't sleep. Statue's trying to eat me. Hey, hey, so did you get a good look at that Know My statue? The statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Well, hey, the statue's doing what? So its eyes opened, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around. You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch? Like, medically speaking? <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. Maybe you should sit down for a bit. Take it easy. I'd hate for anything bad to happen if you tried to launch while you were not feeling great. I like that these guys care. It's lovely. But hey, when you are ready, uh, then you can make the most of our translator tool. Hmm, I can't believe it's all grown up and leaving for space already. For real though, I'm uh, glad that you're the one carrying it and not like Rybeck. They'd fall on it for sure. Uh... Say, if you want to do a short trip to just give your space, uh, to get your space legs under you, you could check out the ruins of on the Atoll Rock. I'd love to learn what those are. Good luck and safe flying. So that seems like a good place to start. So we'll start with the ruins. So you can't sprint, but you can slow walk. Okay. We've also got this. It helps us find frequencies to signal in on. The interesting thing is... Uh, it's ultimately... I'm pointing at planets. Each of the dudes have like a... A musical sort of tell. They all play a different instrument. 
And you can sort of line them all up in a row, I think. You can line some of them up at least. And get them all uh, playing together like a band. It's very, it's very cute. Look at her. What a mighty beast. Oh my goodness, let's go. So that's my spacesuit there. Look, see we've got bottles of water and we've got some cans of beans. Med kit. Got a computer console. Which you can, you know. Rumor mode's pretty cool as well. So this will help guide our journey gently. We've got a gravity rock in here. Very cool. Oh, here we go. Uh, view map. There's the outer rock there. So let's lock onto that. Lift off landing cam. Here we go. So match velocity. That's kind of cool. Engage autopilot. Oh, yeah. Throwing retro rockets. Oops. No, no, no. Can I not roll? It's kind of killing me. Um. Landing mode. I think this kind of addresses the rolling problem, right? All right, there was smoke. There we go. Look at that. You'll have to see it. Look at this dude. Oh, hey, it's you. Ground Control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Oh, don't the other travelers come by? The Lunar Outpost saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly just used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Chert comes by to say hello, hi, but Gabro is Gabro, and you know how Rybeck feels about unnecessary space flight. Don't go. Uh, I mean, anything else that you wanted to ask? Oh my goodness. Seems lonely up here. A little. I'm in touch with Ground Control, Hornfells and Gossen mostly, and they radio up to chat now and then. And when Ground Control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, I launch my little scout at the village. They forget about you? Oh, I don't blame them. For one, I don't check in as often as the other travellers, since I'm always in one place. And it's not so bad up here, really. At least it's peaceful and quiet. You don't always get that in our solar system, let alone in our village. Um, what were you whistling? 
Probably, or actually, uh, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with a signal scope, you know. Best spot for that is the North Pole. Great reception. Uh, the North Pole is marked in red on your mini-map, but the Adel Rock is a pretty small moon, really. You just go north, you can't miss it. Uh, what is this place? Might as well, you know, I'm curious. Even if I, this is retreating old ground, it's still cool to be able to do it. Oh, very funny. Oh, stars above, you're serious, aren't you? Well, that's just depressing. Welcome to the Lunar Outpost. Which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone in. When we first started Outer Wilds, travellers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Now, spacefaring technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tended to uh, fall apart a lot, like more than they do now. Using the outpost cut down on a number of launches and landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, though, it's mostly just me up here, raising saplings from Timber Hearth and keeping an eye on things. Um, cool. Talk to you later. Ship log updated. So, maybe we'll check in with the ship log, actually. Let's see. There we go. Got some things of uh, note. Then you've got map mode. One and only Hearthian village, as well as the main source of explosions on this planet. <laughs> the Nomai statue in the observatory opened its eyes and looked at me. I saw a strange glowing light and my own memories flash before my eyes. So I think that's all that it's got to say. View rumoured entry. I hear that there are Nomai ruins somewhere on the Atoll Rock. No one knows what they are or why they were built. The Nomai text in the observatory talks about calibrating some sort of device on the Atoll Rock. That seems like a good rumor to start with, so let's do that. Tell you what, maybe we hit the North Pole. Flashlight, there we go. Esker's signal scope log. Day 48, still not picking up Rybeck's banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I can hear his music. Listen uh, to Chert play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell a Porpian Gossen that their flirting is not suitable for an, from an aerial perspective. <laughs> Banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Rybeck's doing okay. That oaf, I was worried. Today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know. It was probably nothing. No, it's back again today too. Something strange is coming from Timber Hearth. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timber Hearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. It can't be them. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken. I'd better talk to Nice. Right. Log up to them. Cool. Oh, I'm running out of oxygen. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, dear. So 
seem to have fallen off the side of the planet there. <laughs> I'm struggling to find my footing here. Not really sure what's going on there. That's better. Did I just see that? Look at that. That's cool. Cool as that. Not that I really understand it fully. Here we go. Um, translate. Collius. I was upstairs testing the eye signal locator and it can hear uh, and follow the signals from the sun, giants deep and brittle hollow. However, something strange is happening when I ask the eye signal locator to follow the eye's signal. The device's indicator just rotates wildly and never points to just one direction. Okay. I see, I most likely calibrated the locator incorrectly. Privet, my apprentice, and I will make adjustments and try again. An update, disappointingly, everything is correctly calibrated after all. It saddens me to posit this, my friends, but I believe we need to build a more sophisticated device if we want to find the exact location of the eye of the universe. Ah. Batch. When will then we will build it? Don't lose hope, Cassava. Our search for the eye is what brought our clan to this place. We won't give up so easily. And what happened over here? Batch said, "This is a curious result. It's possible the eye has stopped calling out its signal." Okay, where should this new, more sophisticated locator be built? It may need to be larger than this eye signal locator is. Anona and those of us originally stranded on the Ember Twin built a quantum moon locator there, uh, but the heat of the sun made its construction challenging. I wouldn't recommend building on that plan. Okay. The southern glacier in Brittle Hollow has ample available space. I could construct a new building to house this proposed locator. Yes, let's build there. I imagine our young friend Corey would enjoy that immensely. He's always had a great interest in the, in the eye, especially for a child born so long after the crash. I will begin construction immediately. Who's this plume? On Brittle Hollow's south pole. Uh, immediately then. Okay. Right, so you're going to build a bigger thing. Trees detected, oxygen refilled. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's go back up. So the eye of the universe, or whatever it was called, this symbol, right? And they're saying that this thing skitzes out if you try and locate it. Right. So it seems the Nomai are trying to locate this specific point in space, and they're having a bit of a run of it. How do 
do I get in here? Let's see about this. Oh, right, you can follow your thing back. You be careful that you can get untethered in space. You can reset, but at Groundhog Day is the entire day. So, while dying is not the be all and end all, it can kind of end a 30 minute run. It's kind of got a sort of narrative roguelike element. Hmm. All right, well. Where are we at? Um, I guess we can read the rooms, right? What's going on here? No more, we're disappointed by their failure to detect a signal. There's more to explore here. I like that. I like that it, it keeps the planet tagged. Southern Observatory. Nomai decided to build a larger, more sophisticated eye signal locator on Brittle Hollow's South Pole. Let's go there. We might as well, you know. That sun is looking... Mighty red, isn't it? Um, brittle hollow. Oh, shit, I'm in the atmosphere. Let's get out of that. Or autopilot to the brittle hollow planet. Look at that, nice and easy, nice and quick. So this planet, as I understand it, is sort of the and, and the interesting thing is. Like I said, the other shoe's going to drop shortly, but you reset. Um, and there is a, there's a short time frame around about 30 to 40 minutes long. So, there you go. There you go. Oh, we've crashed. So, this planet is sort of, well, brittle hollow. And look, there's a singularity at the center of it. And it's all just collapsing. Landing gear damage, ships camera damaged. So the the, the, the repair mini game I think is pretty straightforward. There you go, I think we're good. So where are we? We're on the North Pole. Now, did they say the South Pole? I feel like it was this. 
Who was it? Was the South Pole? Look at that. Well, that was a lot better. Ah. This music This music signals loop I think. So we might just accept fate here and let's go have a look at the sun. So, yeah, for reference, the sun goes supernova on this, uh, on this audio cue. And then, uh, you know, wipes out the solar system and resets. It's pretty cool. Well, at least it should. Be a good test to double check and confirm. All right, so the, that music cue plays for a little bit. It sounds like it ends. Look at this, and here we go. Goodness me. So, yeah, there, um, there are some interesting puzzles out there. I don't know it all back to front, um, but I know some. Like, uh, I believe there's, like, a pretty... There's a water planet. Uh, I know that there, there's there's tw there's twin planets sort of doing a Mercury Venus. I think they're in close, and they're orbiting each other, so they're in a closed orbit. But they're also they have a, a pillar of sand between the two of them, and they're called the hourglass twins because they're behaving like an hourglass. They're passing sand mass from one planet to the other. So the thing is, there are caves in that on say the empty planet that are getting filled up as soon as the loop starts so as i understand it if you want to really get to the core of those secrets before they get buried you kind of gotta you gotta jump in your ship and fly straight there at the beginning of the loop so there's all these sort of time sensitive puzzles that are synced to the to the the, the loop because we're you know we're back at time zero right now basically and how cool is that very cool. All right. Well, anyway, like I said, I thought th we'd finish a full loop and give you an idea. And now this is where it starts to unravel or, or open up, rather. We look at all these different hints and clues that we've gathered in our ship's log and pull on the string and follow the bouncing ball and try and figure out this mystery together. Anyway, what a wonderful game. I believe I saw it going a bit, uh, on special on Steam, probably on the back of this DLC announcement. So if you do want to pick it up, you should, obviously. But let me know. I'd like to hear if you do. Uh, beyond that, if you want to see some more episodes and turn this into a longer playthrough, I'd be open to that as well. In fact, I would absolutely love to do that, especially with the DLC around the corner. All right, team, we might just finish there, and I will catch you guys on the next one.